get an antivirus. That's the first piece of advice anyone with a smidgen of computer knowledge is going to tell you. But what if I told you that most antiviruses behave in exactly the same way as malware most of the time? In this video, I'm going to be teaching you exactly how these antivirus companies behave maliciously and ways to protect yourself without the need of any of them. Before I start, just a quick shill. I have compiled all of the lessons I have learned about OPSEC into one course. So click the first link down in the description below if you don't want to be touched intimately by all of these big tech companies. With that out of the way, let's just dive straight in. There's this idea floating around that by using an antivirus, it will protect you or save you from any rats, malware, trojans, etc. But this is just simply not the case. How these antiviruses basically work is they scan your entire computer and they scan for any potential programs that are malicious. So what they do is they then take a hash or a signature of this program and they compare that against a whole database which has potential malware signatures or hashes. So that's how the antivirus program basically knows uh, which program is malware and which program is not. So this would work perfectly against a Fortnite John Wick Game Pass event that you downloaded somewhere on Discord and then you suddenly realize that your computer is doing weird stuff and you need help. Sometimes the malware developers are smart enough to dynamically change the code alongside the virus program, which means that antivirus companies, when they keep on checking the signatures associated with the program, uh, they can't find a match because the code keeps on changing over and over again. So in order to combat this, antivirus companies use a heuristics-based approach. A heuristics-based approach basically means that the antivirus companies, they basically use a method in which they analyze the entire program and they characterize it by its behaviors. So it could be stuff related to how fast the program executes, uh, how does it replicate, you know, different different behaviors essentially that don't uh, that don't actually you know rely on things like signatures or something else. But things like these can actually be bypassed by just adding stuff like delays or further obfuscation tactics in order to mask whatever the program is doing. And it can evade itself from this heuristic based approach. So if you are even a remotely skilled malware developer, you can just find antivirus bypasses up on some website. Uh, you can use raid forums. I think that was taken down recently, but you could use an alternative like breach forums. That, that was probably also taken down recently. But uh, the, the websites that these kind of um, malware, where they're hosted, they keep on getting taken down. You know, it, it's a constant game of cat and mouse. Um, not, not only with the, with the databases that, you know, all of these bypasses are stored, but the antivirus bypasses themselves, they keep on getting patched and then a new one comes out and then that one gets patched. So like, I think the easiest way to kind of find all of these is just to Google them online and you could just, you know, take them in from the internet and then use those bypasses yourself and implement them into your own malware or whatever you want to code. So, you know, to put it simply, it's it's really not that hard to ha to bypass um, any of these antivirus programs. If you have even like a smidgen of like coding or scripting, uh, scripting knowledge, then it's going to be fairly straightforward for you. Did you know that a lot of antivirus companies actually go ahead and spy on you? Yeah, I know it's pretty ironic the way that a company displays themselves as an antivirus company and then they go ahead and they spy on your whole existence. With companies such as Avast Antivirus being fined over $16.5 million for software that actually sold all of their users' browsing data, the article reads, from at least 2014 to 2020, a vast harvested user web browsing information through its antivirus software and browser extension, according to the FTC's complaint. This allowed it to collect data on religious beliefs, health concerns, political views, locations, and financial status. The company then stored this information indefinitely, 
and sold it to over 100 third parties without the knowledge of customers, the complaint says. These antivirus companies put even Facebook to shame with all of their spyware. So if you catch the drift of what I'm saying, you'll begin to realize that all of these antivirus companies are just the same thing, except they put a spin on the marketing or how it's advertised of the way that these companies serve their products, which means you can't really trust them. And I know what you're asking, well then, how do I protect myself against malware? And there's a couple of procedures you can do, depending on which operating system you're on. If you're on Windows, you can just use Windows Defender, which works just as well as any other antivirus. If you're on Linux, you can use Linux to detect and scan for rootkits and do some security auditing. But just in general, the best security is prevention. So don't download stuff from dodgy websites or dodgy links, don't click on any of them. So if you have any pop-ups on your screen, like hot single mothers in your area, I'm sorry to break it to you, man, but that's likely a Nigerian scammer who has a virus for you to download instead of what you expected. So don't, don't go ahead and click on them, okay? Same with torrenting or downloading movies or video games. It's so easy to embed and hide malware in both of them. But hey, I mean, at least you got a free game at the end of the day, so that's always a win. Same with torrenting or downloading movies or video games. It's so easy to embed malware in both of them. But hey, I mean, at least you got a free game at the end of the day. And it's not like the Windows operating system itself uh, has a ton of spyware or malware in it. Also, make sure you update your operating system regularly so you get the latest security patches against any potential malware or viruses that are out there. But that's all I have for this one, and I'll see you in the next one then.